Attention to all founders, hustlers, and hardworking entrepreneurs. The Hustle's 2024 Entrepreneurship Trends Report is out now, and it's a goldmine of valuable strategies, data-driven insights, and expert tips for elevating your business. Have you ever wondered how successful business owners are staying ahead of the crowd in today's super competitive market? Well, we talked to over 500 small business owners to uncover how they're doing it and did a ton of research so you don't have to. We know you're busy building your business, so we got you covered. The Hustle's 2024 Entrepreneurship Trends Report is something you don't want to miss. This right here is the future of entrepreneurship. So stop what you're doing right now and check the link in the show notes to get that report right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, October 3rd. I'm John Wagell here with Juliet Bennett Ryla, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. The sheep population is decreasing and the fluffy animals that go bad are still very desirable to an unexpected group of people, hunters. They're so desired that a man tried to clone sheep to sell to hunters for a huge financial gain. So how did this business idea work out and what's with cloning a sheep? We'll get to that in a bit, but first let's give you the hits and headlines in business and tech. To start us off here, CVS is set to lay off just under 3,000 employees. These add to the 5,000 or so layoffs last year and come from mainly corporate roles, not front of house. The company cited a goal of $2 billion in cost savings and an investment in, quote, technologies to enhance how we work. AI, maybe? Probably. Next, if you're not feeling appreciated at work, you're definitely not alone out there. A new report from Canva, of all places, claims that 75% of workers overall wish they felt more valued in the workplace. To get even further into the weeds there, 28% of women say they feel undervalued or neutral compared to only 16% of men. From there, we go to Google and AI. Google is on the chase with OpenAI in its sights. Multiple teams at Google have been making strides in AI reasoning software, similar to ChatGPT-01. Given the AI race, we all knew this was coming, but it's just nice to say it out loud for everybody to hear. We talked about Wendy's earlier this week, so we're going back to them again. If you were a big SpongeBob SquarePants fan, Wendy's has some good news for you. It's the latest fast food chain to tap into the nostalgia with a limited time Krabby Patty collab cheeseburger and pineapple under the sea frosty. How exciting. And finally, X is said to be worth 80% less now than when Elon Musk purchased it for $44 billion in 2022, per estimates from Fidelity. This is likely due to declining ad revenue and X no longer trades publicly or releases quarterly reports, so we really don't know, but here are some estimates for you. Hey everybody, I've been listening to this awesome podcast lately called Nudge. It's hosted by Phil Agnew and it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Have you ever noticed how the smallest changes can have the biggest impact? On Nudge, you learn simple evidence-backed tips to help you kick bad habits, get a raise, and grow a business. Every bite-sized 20-minute show comes packed with practical advice from admired entrepreneurs and behavioral scientists. Nudge is fast-paced but still insightful with real-world examples that you can actually apply, and it's the UK's fastest-growing business podcast. I was listening to an episode recently where Phil had on Nick Kalenda, who is a former mind reader and psychic who now works with big companies in their sales departments on selling more products. It's absolutely mind boggling and you got to check this out. If you want an MBA's worth of insight in one single podcast, this show is right for you. Every 20 minute podcast gives you something extra special and you can listen to Nudge wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, on to the main story today. Cloning sheep seems like a big deal for science, but it's actually a huge deal for the government and hunters. So Juliet, we're going to have to break this down. This is a bit of an odd one, but I'm excited. Can you tell me about how this whole sheep cloning thing began? Yeah, I guess if you're not a big game hunter, you'd probably never think about this, which as someone who has never hunted anything in my life, I did not think about it. When I think about sheep, I think about like little fuzzy sheep at the petting zoo type sheep. Oh yeah, same. But apparently, you know, there are wild sheep and they are very large and they are very popular to hunt for sport. In fact, uh, one of the most prized animals you can hunt, apparently, is a ram. 
There are even like informal competitions, like the Grand Slam, where you hunt 12 of them. And then, I don't know, I guess you you become a cool hunter. I don't know um, why <laughs> you want to do this. But if you enjoy hunting, a ram is a top prize. And there's some reasons for this, apparently. Mm -hmm. So I read an entire article in the New York Times that followed these big game hunters. And apparently... Back before America existed as a country, there were a lot of wild sheep and they just hung out, uh -huh. you know, and then more and more people showed up and pushed them out of their natural habitats. They showed up with domesticated sheep. There were diseases. We hunted them. And now, as of 2017, the New York Times cited about 200,000 wild sheep roaming around in North America. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there were a lot of conservation efforts when it comes to big sheep. Oddly enough, hunting funds those efforts. But part of that is you can't just go hunting sheep willy nilly. Now, that is true of pretty much any animal, deer, yeah. bear, et cetera. But the sheep are, you know, more rare. So it actually is more expensive to get a permit to hunt a wild sheep. So only rich people basically can get these super exclusive permits. It's a little easier to get a permit if you live in the state. But you've got people shelling out thousands of dollars, in some cases over $100,000, to go on these big sheep hunts. And that includes the cost of the permits and the tags, but also guides who will help you hunt the sheep because it is difficult to hunt a sheep. You can't just sit somewhere and wait for a sheep to come along. You've got to go in these terrains and they're very difficult and they can last days or weeks. Wow. Okay. So hunting sheep is a big thing. So what I'm hearing is there's a whole micro economy about the world of hunting sheep as far as people that pay to hunt the sheep extra to get these permits, mm -hmm. people that help them hunt the sheep. Right. And also the travel that they probably need to do to get to the sheep because as I just found out, sheep are mostly located in western mountainous regions of North America, ranging from kind of southern Canada to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So if you're not out there, you got to go there. You got to get out there to hunt the sheep and I guess that is what we can call sheep tourism. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to like Montana, which is where the cloning takes place. Uh-huh. And tell me about the cloning. Who's doing the cloning? How did he decide to do the cloning? How did he want to get into the sheep economy? So like I said, there's not a lot of wild sheep. So this guy is a rancher, Arthur Shubarth. He's 81 years old. He lives in Montana. He was recently sentenced to six months in prison and fined $20,000 for cloning a sheep. And there's just a lot of interesting things about this story. So there's a big sheep, uh, Marco Polo Argali sheep. These guys can get up to 300 pounds, Whoa. but they don't live here. They live in places like Kyrgyzstan, which is where he sent his son, according to Ars Technica, to go hunt one in 2012. That hunt was successful. Then the son smuggled back sheep parts in the United States and did not declare them. The tissue apparently could not be used. So he had to go back to Kyrgyzstan and hunt another sheep in 2013. And this time it was successful. Oh my God. I did not know this until I read the Ars Technica story, but you can send genetic material to a lab. I don't know. Maybe you want your cat forever. I don't know why anyone would do this. I guess that would be it to have your cat forever and pay for cloned embryos, which you can keep in your freezer until you're ready to transplant them into a surrogate animal mother and hopefully out comes that animal. Um <laughs> And so he did that. Wow. And in 2017, he got this big sheep that he named the Montana Mountain King. Now, then he took that sheep and tried to breed that sheep with other female sheep known as ewes. Uh -huh. He also sold its semen to other ranchers so they could use it to inseminate their sheep. And this was all to create a bigger sheep, the kind of which do not live and are not native to North America, to sell to game ranches, which is where people go apparently to hunt wild game. Okay. Although I don't know how wild it is if you clone a sheep and put it on a game ranch. That seems kind of like the guy in the most dangerous game who facilitates shipwrecks so that he can hunt for sport whoever ends up on his island. It seems like a very manufactured situation to me. Yeah. Also uh -huh. for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> for the price, I'm just saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, why stop there? That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Basically to create the equivalent of mining boars in World of Warcraft. Uh, <laughs> that's quite yes. the price to pay. And obviously, from what you said up top, this is completely illegal. But I'm going to humor this. Why is it illegal to get sheep genetics shipped to me and then clone <laughs> a big sheep for people to hunt? <laughs> well, um, 
for one, this is a protected species, this kind of sheep. And for two, they're actually banned in Montana because, like I said, there's all these conservation efforts going on because when you bring one type of sheep over and put it in a place that it doesn't belong, there is a possibility for disease or hybridization. And then you don't have the sheep you're trying to conserve in the first place. Wow. So it's really to protect native sheep. If you want to get real deep in the weeds, there's something called the Lacey Act, which prevents people from moving around animals or animal parts that can also include dead animals who aren't supposed to be there, who are obtained illegally. There's like a whole list of these violations. And it was so weird because it's like these people ran a caviar company and they got the wrong type of row. They got the wrong type of fit. It's very if this piques your interest, there is more for you to uncover in the wild world of transporting illegal animal parts. Yes. But that's the deal with the sheep. Wow. And given this information, this one guy did it, Mm kind of opened the floodgates a little bit. Are there any other large animals being attempted to be cloned? And is the government able to keep up with all of this? You know, given all the AI stuff that's happening, uh, do they have a second to spare for giant cloned animals? Well, you know, it's hard to say how deep the sheep black market goes because he did have co-conspirators. I feel like we are just not prepared enough to know what other types of animals people are trying to clone to hunt for sport. But I did have one question as I was reading this whole thing. I thought, Mm -hmm. if it's illegal to clone a big sheep, what is up with Colossal, the company that's trying to de-extinct the woolly mammoth? And I read an article, albeit from 2022, that did not fully answer my question. It was basically like, yeah, there aren't laws around cloning animals that don't exist, which, you know, maybe there should be because I think we've all seen Jurassic Park. Yes. We all know what can happen. Yes. This is the beginning of that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Mammoths do not fall into the same category as big sheep. They are not a protected species simply because they don't exist Mm -hmm. and they're not banned anywhere Again, because they don't exist. So what a loophole. I'm sure the government would have a big problem if there was a mammoth, but it remains to be seen. Right. And then there's even more weirdness because it's like, oh, you know, people hunt elephants for their tusks and that's illegal. But what if we cloned a woolly mammoth and the woolly mammoth had a tusk? And I'm like, you know what? I don't think humans should be involved with what animals are doing at all. (laughs) You made the sheep illegal. Now you want to clone the sheep so you can kill the sheep. Now you want to clone the mammoth. And some guys over here being like, can I hunt that mammoth and sell its tusks? And I'm just, you know what? Maybe chill. (laughs) Yeah, we have had enough with nature. Please send us to Mars as soon as possible. I think it should be legal, however, to clone yourself and then hunt yourself for sport just to see if you could take yourself in a fight. That's fine. That is definitely a sci-fi film. (laughs) Yes. It's actually not fine. And I would side with the clone in this movie. I'm just saying I would not be surprised if that happens. (laughs) All right, that'll do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the clone of the Hustle Daily Show. We are a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a ton more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go sign up at thehustle.co slash email. Throw us a follow on Instagram and clone that sheep. Super quick question here. How many tabs do you have open right now? If you're like me, it's a lot. And if you're running a business, it's a lot more. And with all those tabs, you're spending more time searching through data and less time, you know, growing your business. But HubSpot's customer platform brings all your tools into a single powerful place that your teams can use together. So close those tabs. It's business growing time. Visit HubSpot.com to get started today.